With Video Studio, you can create a variety of masks on your video or image clips to create different effects. Put video inside your text or reveal text from behind an object in your video. Or use masks in conjunction with color grading. Or use effects to mosaic a face from a clip. Or bring your subject out from the background of a clip. The first thing to note when working with masks is to think about what it is you want to mask and what effects you want to achieve. I've got a clip of a grandmother and a second clip of her granddaughter graduating. I want to mask out the background around the granddaughter and superimpose her as an overlay onto the grandmother clip so we can see both sides of the conversation at the same time. To start masking, first select the clip on the timeline that you want to mask and then press the Mask Creator icon. Then I just select a masking tool. This is how you'll paint your masked area onto your video clip. I'll use the circular mask tool and then just draw onto the clip itself. I could add to the masked area by drawing additional circles or with any of the other masking tools, but this is perfect for what I want right now. I can move the mask around using this tool if I want to get its placement just right. And I'll also add some feathering. This blurs the edge of the mask to make it blend in with whatever we're going to put the result over. Transparency is a control that's only used to help me draw the mask and won't affect the end result. Drag it all the way to the right to just see what is in the mask so far. And if I wanted to reverse this mask, in effect to cut out the subject in the center, I could invert mask. This can be useful if it's quicker to mask the things you don't want to keep. But in my case, I don't need an inverted mask, so I'll click OK. Now I'm back on the timeline and the clip I've been working on is duplicated onto the overlay track. To see the mask, you'll either need to turn off the main video track, delete the original clip, or I can just move the new clip on the overlay track so that it's above the clip I want to overlay it onto. Now I can just change the size and the position of the mask clip to get it where I want it. And now I have both subjects on screen at the same time. Another type of mask is a text mask. Let's mask this clip on the main video track by selecting the clip and then the mask creator. For our mask tool, I'll use the text mask. Double click and just type the text. Edit the font and text size. It's good to use a chunky font so that more of your video will be seen through the text mask. Then double click outside of the mask to commit the mask. Fine tune the position if you need to, and then press OK. I'll turn off the main video track again so we can see the result. And as all of the black shown around the mask is actually transparent, I can overlay this onto other video clips, just like our first mask. If we want to edit the mask now that we've seen it, just make sure the mask clip is selected and press the mask tool once more, and you'll be able to edit some parameters like position or feather, or even add to the mask itself. Let's try inverting the mask. And I can use this animated background that's bundled with Video Studio 2020 as it kind of looks like air or wind. Now the text is animated with an air effect. Masks that change over time are more involved. Things can start to get complicated quickly here as we'll be using the mask tracker and multiple overlay tracks along with the original video track. So think about what you're trying to achieve and plan it out to save yourself having to redo a bunch of work down the line. I have this kid with a football and this text with customized motion applied, but I want the text to appear from underneath him as he moves towards the ball. So I need to create a mask that extends from his belly to the right edge of the screen. I don't need to start masking until the text starts to move on screen and I don't need to mask once it's past his belly. So I can cut the clip at these two points. Then select this middle clip and launch Mask Creator. I'll zoom in to my target area so I can be more precise. And I can change the zoom location with this tool on the right. We could just paint a mask on with a paintbrush. But Video Studio also has a smart brush that looks for edges. So I'll undo and start again. Decrease the brush size so you can be more precise. and adjust edge tolerance to help the smart brush out. 
Higher edge tolerance will mean that only colors that are very close to the original color that is under your cursor when you start drawing will be included in the mask. And lower edge tolerance will be less strict and let in colors that are further away from your original sample. Just play around with the settings as you draw your mask. And if you make a mistake, just use the Smart Eraser brush, which works with the edge tolerance slider in exactly the same way. In this case, I just need the track to his stomach. So once I have that looking pretty good, I can draw a rectangle to fill in to the right edge of the video clip. Now I need to track this mask so that it moves to the left as the child moves in the clip. I can detect movement to just the next frame or to a specified time code or to the end of the clip. I'll try this option. Video Studio will try and track the selected mask across all of the frames. Looking back, I can see I'll have to do a bit of manual mask alteration at each frame, so I'll speed up during this part. You'll see at this point why we split this clip up before entering the mask creator, as we only want to mask as few frames as possible. Then click OK, and our mask selection is added to the overlay track. In this instance, we want the text to be between the original clip and the masked overlay clip. So if we move the masked clip down to overlay track 2, and then move the text onto overlay track 1, we should have what we're looking for. If there's any imperfections in the mask, just jump back into Mask Creator on the overlay clip. Let's look at one more mask use case, adding effects. I've got a simple feathered mask on my subject here already. And I've still got the original clip on the timeline as well so I can jump into the color properties of the mask clip and alter the hue for a superhero look. Or I can alter the background clip. I've got motion blur and diffuse glow effects already on this track. If I turn them on, you'll see how they're affecting the whole clip. Now switch back to the project view to see the result. It really helps to lift my subject away from the background. You could also use masks in this way to mosaic someone's face from a video. Just use the mosaic filter. You can even use masks within masks to create surreal effects like this. but things do start to get very complicated. Just remember, with multiple overlay tracks, the overlay track that is at the bottom of your timeline will be what is displayed on the top of your video. In this project, I've got the mask of the opening doors on top. Then the train carriage with an inverted mask masking out the window. And then the yoga on the dock clip. And then the base clip, which shows the sky through the train carriage window when the yoga clip isn't present. Hopefully this gives you an understanding and some inspiration for how to use masks creatively in your projects. Happy editing!